Is Tanya gonna fail? Well, obviously. Let's go! Okay, okay. Let's take this a bit more seriously for a second. As easy as it is to say that Google's shiny new surface is doomed, it's not enough. There has to be a reason why everyone says that Stadia is going to flop, right? Well, there is. Let's go. For those who are unaware, Stadia is a new game streaming service offered by Google, promising compatibility with just about anything, from your phone to your Chromecast. Hell, they even showed it working in a Chrome browser. In that last case, you could simply play a game after clicking a Play Now button on a YouTube video featuring a game, or in an ad off to the side. Seems rather promising on paper. But from what Google is telling us, Stadia will be a platform where you buy a game, and then it will be streamed right to your choice of product. As you can imagine, this brings a lot of questions with it. The main issue being, what will happen to that game if Stadia shuts down? If you buy the game through Stadia, you have access to the cloud use of that game. With the track history that Google has with failed projects, it's not hard to believe that Stadia's demise is a possibility. If this day does come to pass, odds are you will lose all of those games you spent your hard-earned money on. Quite the blow to anyone with a significant investment in this. At least with Steam, Origin, Uplay, the Epic Game Store, and many others, you have the game saved onto your hard drive, allowing you to access it at a later date, not needing the platform to launch it. But to be fair, you will need a launcher to be able to play online with other people. At least until someone inevitably releases a mod and servers allowing online play. But that's besides the point. A possible solution for this could be switching the platform over from a store like Steam or Epic to a service akin to Netflix or Spotify. And while choosing this route would solve the problem in the former section, it raises another major concern. If we stop subbing, what would happen to our saves? Nothing means more to us than our saves, minus the game itself, of course. The stories and the bonds that we have made with those bits over hours and hours of game time, those could all disappear rather easily if your saves are with this theoretical stadium model. It would be as simple as Google implementing a term where your saves are deleted after X amount of time when you stop subscribing, as it would be dependent on how generous Google is feeling. That could be a month, a year, or never. On top of that, your saves would disappear with Stadia if it was ever put on the chopping block. And given Google's previously mentioned track history, it's not looking good. Let's step back into reality for a moment and talk about the required internet speeds. Wanting to take it simple and minimal? Well, you will need 10 megabits for 720p 60fps. Working our way up the ladder, 1080p needs 20 to 25 megabits a second. And 4K demands 35 megabits per second. But to be able to access that top tier, you will need to spend $10 a month for Sadia's Pro service. Beware though, that premium offer will chew through a typical 1TB data cap in only 65 hours, giving you only a little over 2 hours of gameplay a day. A reasonable amount a day, when you're the only person and you game on your internet exclusively, but factoring in multiple people, the common use of other streaming platforms like Hulu, YouTube, Netflix, along with other general uses, that cuts down rather quick. Even the 1080p streaming option will cap you out in just 113 hours. While not as demanding, it can still push you to your limit. Then there's the latency. A Google engineer stated that the latency from Stadia varies from 70 milliseconds to 130 milliseconds. At its peak, that's around 8 frames of lag. When it comes to any game that's competitive, like Mortal Kombat, or timing based, like Thumper, it's a death sentence. The same can be said for online games as well. Games just like Destiny 2 or The Division 2, games Google have actively promoted as big sellers for Stadia, well what shouldn't feel the impact of this? You're probably thinking ones like Assassin's Creed, where timing and stealth is absolutely crucial, or Trials Rising, a game where every minute input makes or breaks a run. Yeah, nothing is left out from the impact of these 8 frames. To give you an idea, even CSGO with some of the lowest latency connection and highest tick rate servers in the industry still feel the impact of just 25 milliseconds of latency. Then there's the factor of the TV, and people who don't know how to switch their TV to gaming mode. It's just like a massacre of frames here. Taking a look at Stadia's gaming library for a second, it's rather weak. At least with Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo, they have a suite of legendary titles that could be used as leverage, along with hundreds of other games. In comparison, Stadia is launching with just around 30 games, most already released and ran their life in terms of sales. Okay, so what about the games releasing side by side with Stadia? Most people, in my opinion, would play those games on their preferred platforms 
you know, ones where they've invested time and money into. I know it's anecdotal, but I know I will. And everyone I know will as well. So what about trying to stream these games to your phone instead? It doesn't seem reasonable as of the moment. Requiring a steady stream of uninterrupted 10 megabits per second on a phone is not going to happen with our current infrastructure. Maybe once 5G becomes a norm, this idea can come into fruition. But as it stands right now, it does not seem reasonable. And that is if they support any other phone but Google's own Pixel. And as of the moment, there's no solid evidence showing the possibility of playing on any other phone. Quoting the company's CEO, with Google, your game will be immediately discoverable by 2 billion people on a Chrome browser, Chromebook, Chromecast, Pixel device, and we have plans to support more browsers and platforms over time. Not looking good. Hey, we don't know though. Google might support it on launch, or one day, but if it's not on launch, then it becomes a race to see what happens first. Stadia getting the plug pulled, or this absolutely crucial feature implemented. With all that being said, who is Stadia for? Well, the hardcore gamers are currently invested into their own current stations. Casuals don't really have any games here to choose from. Even FPS junkies would most likely rather play on platforms where lag is minimized. So who is it for? I honestly believe that Google is banking on the belief of an untapped market of people who are not gaming, but wish to get in the hobby without having to invest into the hardware. But the issue with that is the gaming market is one of the largest in the world right now. And anyone who wants to play currently is and on their preferred platform as well. Whether it be mobile, console, PC, or something else, every gamer has their need filled. The threat of losing games, breaking data caps, lack of support from the community, Google's vast graveyard of project, no angle looks good for the longevity of Stadia. And with everyone around the internet saying the same, there's no doubt Stadia will fail. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up if you want to give me your ideas, thoughts, or anything else, please tell me down in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell while you're at it. Have a good one.